2021, I was one of the jurors um, on the panel that had to decide the winner of the, the Abster Art Prize. Um, and what usually happens, you're given a whole list of artists and you have to make your decisions and you pick your top three. In this case, there was only one. I said to them, I'm not going to bother giving you a second and a third because there's nobody else comparable to this one particular painter. And that painter was the Zimbabwean Wycliffe Mandopa. Now, what was it about this particular artist that really, really hit me? The question I asked myself, isn't this guy the signature of our age? Isn't this the man, the defining artist for now? Um, what was it about his painting? Was it the wild, phobus, expressionistic usage of paint? The recklessness of his distribution across the canvas? The complete irreverential relationship to the sanctity of the human body? The carnivalist, bacchanalian, sexualized, orgiastic world that he was capturing? Wasn't this the ultimate modern moment, this moment, you know, of Sodom and Gomorrah, this moment of like living in Babylon, this moment on the edge of anything that is sane and balanced and healthy and whole? And isn't this what made him really, really exciting? And then when I thought about it, I suddenly started thinking about the great mid 19th century poet, um, Charles um, Baudelaire who in many ways, was the, many ways was the great analyst of the mid-19th century, and again, a figure of, who was very much locked into debauchery, into decadence, and wrote a famous poem called The Flowers of Evil. And then, I re reading Charles Baudelaire, I basically came across this particular statement. He says, each age has a deportment, a glance, and a smile of its own. Each age shares a deportment, a glance, and a smile of its own. And I think this is what it was that hit me when, look, when I looked at um, Wycliffe Mandopa's work. I thought, isn't this the smile? Isn't this the deportment? Isn't this the edge of now? And if that's the case, why? It's not because we want to dance in the grave of, of, of our collapsed value system. It's not because we're living in some absolutely amoral or immoral realm where anything goes, but because we're living in a space of radical moral relativity, a world where truth is collapsed, where fake news is absolutely dominant, where there's absolutely no trust. In a world, in other words, where anything goes, and I think it's in that context that I think what um, Wycliffe Mandopa is giving us is a world completely unhinged, a world in which anything goes, a world where all values have been corrupted. And in that world, I think he is telling the truth about human fragility, the truth about having lost our sextant, our sense of focus, our order, our compass. And a world very much that is South Africa is a world of kleptocracy, of corruption, of rape and rapine, of the abuse of women and children, the utter destruction of any moral decency. And it's in that space that he celebrates the inverse world, the night world of this collapse. He does that not simply to ask us to enjoy the immoral, is asking us to examine why we have become this way, why have we become as debased as we are. And it is not just South Africa that is in this state at the moment. The entire world is in a space where neoliberal democracies, as I said, are failing us, where fascisms are on the rise, where basically hatred and nativism are one. And it's in that space, here you find this young Zimbabwean artist saying to us, why is this the world we inhabit and why have we chosen it? And he is not making a moral judgment about it. He is performing, as I said, all the best artists perform the horrors, innovations, transformations, or anxieties of our age. And this is his energy, and this is his angle.